gonna so we're now live on YouTube so first let me say thank you to everyone who's joined us today for Razum for Ukraine's Crimean Tatar Flag Day celebration. My name is Leah Batstone and I'm the head of culture initiatives for Razum. We're a nonprofit organization based in New York working for an independent and prosperous Ukraine. We're absolutely thrilled to have Isla Bakali, the US representative of the World Congress of Crimean Tatars host this event with us. Thank you, Isla, so much for being here. Well, thank we you. Are honored, we are honored to be joined by Ambassador Volodymyr Yelchenko, Ambassador Serhi Kislitsia, Consul General Alexei Holobov, and Permanent Representative of the President of Ukraine in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea, Anton Kornievich. Um, in Ukraine, this day is marked by the flying of the Crimean Tatar flags alongside the Ukrainian blue and yellow flag. Um, today, in the spirit of celebrating the two flags of one nation, we will bring you a series of cultural performances by Crimean Tatar artists from around the world, from Kyiv to Brooklyn. And following the performances, we will bring all the, all the performers on screen for a short Q&A session. So please feel free to submit your questions through the YouTube chat throughout the event or um, at the end of the event, we, we, have, we have someone who will forward those questions to us. So now I'm going to turn it over to Isla. Thank you so much, Isla. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's truly a wonderful collaboration between Razam for Ukraine and the Crimean Tatars here in New York and worldwide because we have uh, a Crimean Tatars from Romania as well coming on board here. But I did want to present to everyone uh, uh, watching that what is the meaning of the Crimean Tatar Flag Day here today. Um, and as we gather all together in Ukraine and worldwide uh, to celebrate the Crimean Tatar Flag Day from heart to heart. Our flags are raised all over Ukraine and the Ukrainian embassies abroad and the permanent mission of Ukraine to the United Nations. Our Crimean Tatar flag, as you can see behind me and all throughout the screen, is covered with a sky blue background with the Tarak Tamga, which is the cleft seal adapted by Crimean Hans. It is the coat of arms depicted on our flag, and it's the generic sign of the Garais, the ruling dynasty of the Crimean Hanite. But um, 10 years ago, in 2010, a group of Crimean Tatar youth in Crimea uh, were inspired uh, by their historical heritage, and they got together and created uh, this um, grassroots youth in initiative to uh, anoint a Crimean uh, Tatar Flag Day, uh, which gained so much momentum, it led on the third session of the Kurultai of the Crimean Tatar people to officiate this day, June 26, as the Crimean Tatar Flag Day. And while uh, Crimean Tatars and Ukrainians throughout the world are taking part in events, flash mobs, social media to celebrate this day, sadly, the Crimean Tatars in occupied Crimea by the Russian Federation have been banned from gathering uh, and to freely associate on this day. Um, truly, this Crimean Tatar Flag Day has proven its highest relevance given the 2014 occupation. And today we are here um, with our Crimean Tatar flag, Crimean Tatars and Ukrainians in United States in solidarity with the indigenous Crimean Tatars in occupied Crimea uh, to share uh, our Crimean Tatar flag day. Uh, Leah, I would like to now uh, have you 
um, as in our, our tradition, is to open the Crimean Tatar Flag Day with our anthem, Aunt at Kemen. We'll start with the video, and then I would like, after we complete the video, for Leila Nemetov, Leila Hanum, to recite the I, I, I Pledge. So can we put on, and it is a, a song that rose in the status of a Crimean Tatar anthem, and was written by Numan Chelebi Jihad uh, in 1918. And uh, he's an outstanding historical figure uh, in the Crimean Tatar uh, uh, history. So uh, please, uh, Leah, if you can play the video. Absolutely. <laughs> to first uh, introduce His Excellency Ambassador Volodymyr Yelchenko, Embassy of Ukraine to the United States. Your Excellency, Coach Kelvin is welcome. Uh, it is indeed a great honor to have you here among us uh, together on the Crimean Tatar Flag Day. But before you begin, if you could allow me to go off the, off the script in wishing you a most happy birthday that will follow on the heels of the Crimean Tatar Flag Day celebration. Perhaps this can qualify you a little bit of being a Crimean Tatar. So uh, we wish you a most happy birthday and uh, look forward to your uh, remarks. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for your congratulations. Uh, dear friends, uh, I would like to start by thanking organization Razon for Ukraine and Ayla Bakali for putting together this event. By commemorating the day of the Crimean Tatar national flag, we demonstrate how truly united we are. Ukrainians and Crimean Tatars are one. We have one country and one history. 
Many generations of Crimean Tatars struggled for their uh, right to proudly fly their flag and to live in their own homeland. It, it took many years to finally realize this dream, but now their land and their freedom are once again being taken away from them by a foreign aggressor. Last month, we commemorated the victims of Stalin's crime of genocide against Crimean Tatars. In May 1944, more than 183,000 Crimean Tatars were forcibly deported from Crimea to Siberia, the Urals, and Central Asia. Over half of them died. Families of those who survived were able to return only after Ukraine became independent in 1991. And only then Crimean Tatar flag again started flying over Crimea. Yet history changed its course again. Russia's armed aggression and illegal occupation of Crimea in 2014 started the second, now hybrid, deportation of Crimean Tatars. Artificial change in the demographic composition of the peninsula and political, religious, and cultural persecutions of Crimean Tatars. Since uh, 2014, more than 43,000 people left Crimea over intimidation, persecution, and fears of the return of the past in its worst manifestations. Russia banned the Mejlis of the Crimean Tatar, pronouncing its activities as extremist. It forced all 12 independent Crimea Tatar media to leave the peninsula due to persecution. In the occupied Crimea, if you speak your mind, you can go to jail, get tortured or killed. To this day, over 100 citizens of Ukraine, most of them Crimean Tatars, continue to be legally detained by Russia for political reasons. We highly appreciate strong and clear position of the US government, which is expressed in the, 20, in the 2018 Crimea declaration by the US Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo that Crimea is part of Ukraine, and that the United States will never recognize its illegal armed takeover by Russia. We are all together in this fight, the fight for liberation of the peninsula from Russian occupation, and the fight for the right of Crimean Tatars to live freely in the Ukrainian Crimea. On this day, the Crimean Tatar flag is flying over the embassy of Ukraine in the United States, and over all Ukrainian diplomatic missions around the world, serving as yet another reminder, Crimea is Ukraine. Together we are stronger, two flags, one country, one people, one fight, and together we will win. I thank you. Thank you very much. Those are uh, quite profound words, and uh, we Crimean Tatars adhere to every word, every comma, every I dotted in those words, and indeed Crimea is Ukraine. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency, for being with us. Next, I have the pleasure to introduce our, our next distinguished guest, which is His Excellency Ambassador Serhii Kislitsia of the Permanent Mission of Ukraine to the UN. Ambassador, thank you for joining us in this celebration. Good afternoon, everyone, and I'm I would like to join Ambassador Yelchenko in extending my warmest congratulations on the occasion of celebration of a very special day for the Crimean Tatar people. We proudly uh, hoisted the Crimean Tatar flag at the mission premises uh, today alongside the national flag of Ukraine. From the establishment of the Crimean Tatar flag in 1917, it followed hard and challenging history of the people, which it was meant to unite from Stalin's uh, repressions and uh, deportation in the 20th century to Putin's aggression and occupation in the 21st century. It is not by chance that today we mark the day of the Crimean Tatar flag and the anniversary of the signature of the UN Charter. There is a clear reason why the world, after 75 years from the establishment of the United Nations, still remains unfair and imperfect with wars and human suffer. Back in 1945, the criminal 
Stalin, only several months after the deportation of Crimean Tatars from their motherland in May 1944, sat at the table with the heads of large states in Yalta, in Crimea, which is yet another symbolism of this day, and negotiated the principles how to rule the world and ensure their spheres of interest. The imperfections of the agreements reached in Yalta in Crimea and subsequently formalized on this day, on the 26th of June in San Francisco, we all harvest nowadays. Russia has become even more cynical and dishonorable in its groundless neo-imperial neo ambitions. At the United Nations, Ukraine's personal efforts to stop the violations of the international law by Russia and bring to justice those responsible. We also make the scope of the heinous crimes against the Crimean Tatar people recognized and remembered. I am very happy and proud that yesterday, the Secretary General uh, Antonio Guterres himself said at the press conference that there is no question for him or for the organization that Crimea is occupied. We will continue to work together as a government, as a diplomats, together with the Crimean Tatar community all over the world to defend their interests and to approach the day when everyone can return to the occupied Crimea. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador, um, for the history and for those words today. Our next distinguished speaker is His Excellency Consul General of Ukraine in New York, Mr. Alexei Holobov. I understand that the Consulate General in New York was one of the first celebrants of Crimean Tatar Flag Day, opening its doors in Manhattan to the Tatar diaspora for the past three years. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. <laughs> he, very generous. His door, always the doors are open for the Crimean Tatars. Thank you. May I start now? Yes, please, please. Um. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Leah. Excellencies, uh, distinguished representatives of the Crimean Tatar people, dear friends, I'd like to add just a few words to what has already been said by Ambassador Yelchenko and Ambassador Kislitsa. Firstly, to thank Crimea Tatar diaspora leaders and Razom for gathering us today on this wonderful occasion. And I cordially greet you all with the 10th anniversary of the Crimean Tatar Black Day. І хоч сьогодні прикрі, але переконаний тимчасові обставини, як то російська окупація, яка не дозволяє вшанувати цей день в Криму, або коронавірус, який не дав нам провести традиційні урочистості в Генконсульстві України в Нью-Йорку, хочу запевнити, що українські дипломати роблять і робитимуть усе можливе на всіх рівнях, у тому числі на рівні консульських округів, щоб наблизити день, коли кримсько-татарський прапор, символ боротьби за звільнення Криму, замайорить по всій автономній республіці Крим і в місті Севастополь. Ще раз вітаю всіх кримсько-татарського прапора, шана кримсько-татарському народові, незламному боротьбі проти російської окупації за повернення до вільного українського Криму і слава Україні. Дякую. Героям слава, дякую. Thank you. I we have our next uh, speaker Anton Kornovich who is the permanent representative of the president of Ukraine in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and the city of Sevastopol. Hosh Keltinus, Antana. And um, yes, uh, Hosh Keltinus. Um, you know, the um, as the permanent representative to the president of Ukraine, your comments are so valuable and hold tremendous gravitas. And as you know uh, that uh, the Crimean Tatars uh, now in occupied Crimea are not able to freely associate, gather together to celebrate their uh, flag as um, 
uh, Article 11 of uh, UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples uh, states that we have a right to maintain and uh, protect, develop the past, present, and future. And the flag is our symbol of our Indigenous identity. We look forward to your uh, words, um, uh, on Mr. Anton Karnovich, please. Yeah, uh, good evening uh, or good afternoon, dear colleagues uh, <laughs> in Ukraine. It's certainly good evening. Uh, greetings from uh, the city of Kherson, uh, which is only an hour and a half from the temporary administrative borderline with the temporary occupied autonomous republic of Crimea. Uh, and of course, uh, many, uh, many uh, good greetings to His Excellency Mr. Yelchenko for his upcoming uh, birthday. Uh, it's a big pleasure to be here today with you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bakali, for uh, inviting me to talk a bit about this day. Uh, and uh, I will uh, focus on the things which are now happening in Ukraine uh, on the level of uh, government and on the level of the president of Ukraine uh, to get the sense that, that Ukraine is really looking at this Crimean Tatar flag day as a very important uh, day and very, very import important date uh, in our calendar. Uh, so, first of all, uh, today, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Volodymyr Zelensky is visit visiting Kherson and Kherson region. Uh, he's here with a two-day visit. And uh, uh, one of the first things which he did today when he came to Kherson, it was in the airport, he met with the um, uh, freed uh, former political prisoner, Adam Bekirov. And uh, Adam Bekirov uh, made a present for Mr. President. It was a Crimean Tatar flag. <laughs> and uh, they agreed together that this flag will be, uh, will be staying in the cabinet of Mr. President until Crimea is deoccupied. And then when Crimea is deoccupied, this flag will be one of the first which will raise on the buildings in the freed Ukrainian Crimea. So uh, this flag is now coming to Kyiv and is now coming to the office of the president. Um, and, and, and the president, uh, one of the first things which, which he did uh, was um, uh, the uh, good words about the Crimean Tatar flag day uh, said to uh, Mr. Adam Bakirov. Uh, by saying this, uh, I want to make uh, an emphasis that for uh, the president of Ukraine and for the government, this day is a very important one. The office of the president made an official address today in the morning. You can find it online in, in the social media of the office yes. of the president, which states that uh, the office of the president today is together with Crimean Tatars and all Ukrainian citizens uh, in commemorating this very important day. Uh, uh, today also uh, the leaders of Crimean Tatar people uh, rose a flag uh, e near the building of uh, Ministry for Foreign Affairs together with the minister Dmitro Kuleba and first deputy minister Emine Jepar. Uh, today, the uh, Crimean Tatar flag uh, rose in uh, many uh, city councils uh, throughout Ukraine. Uh, it also rose in Kherson, near the Kherson Regional State Administration. Uh, and also it rose uh, near the biggest Ukrainian universities like the Taras Shevchenko National University of Kyiv. Uh, by saying all this, uh, I would again made, make an emphasis that uh, these days were important for us and we really believe that uh, sooner or later, and of course uh, we, we, we bet that it will be sooner, uh, the Crimean Tatar flag together with the Ukrainian state flag, uh, which actually do have a lot of things in common, like the colors, and uh, um, other yes. things that, that they will they will they will fly um, upon all the buildings administrative buildings uh, in the autonomous republic of Crimea and the city of Sevastopol, and the Crimean Tatar flag uh, is really the symbol of uh, the indigenous people of Ukraine, Crimean Tatars, who are now uh, being persecuted heavily and massively uh, for committing no crime. Uh, and of course, uh, the biggest abuses and the biggest violations of human rights in the temporary occupied Crimea are committed against the indigenous people, Crimean Tatar people. So uh, today we are uh, together with Crimean Tatar people as every other day uh, in a year. Uh, and we really hope that uh, the Crimean Tatar indigenous people will have the ability to freely live 
work, pray, raise, raise the national flag in their homeland, uh, Ukraine and Crimea. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anton Pernovich, so very much. We will definitely carry those words throughout this year. And again, on the next year of our celebrations, we'll come together again and uh, definitely uh, move forward uh, on the next steps. Uh, you know, the Crimean Tatar flag it's just more than a symbol it, uh, and more than a, a fabric. It represents courage, it represents resilience. But there is also another side of representation of the uh, flag. And it's also representative of tenderness, of, of getting together, of people who love their land, who love their people. And as a uh, symbolic uh, uh, gesture of this tenderness, we have a Crimean uh, Tatar young lady who's born in Crimea after uh, Ukraine's independence from the Soviet Union, uh, Bayan Veliev, and she will recite a, a short uh, stanza uh, titled Mili Bayrak, uh, that is the Crimean Tatar flag representing its identity. Bea, uh, are you ready to recite now, Bea? Can you begin your recitation? Go ahead. Milli Bayrak. Tulber Altan Tamhala Milatam Nantam Sala, Vatanam Nakemala, Vizam Milli Kok Bayrak. Yuxiaklergeta Klensen, Shuval the Sedden Lensen, Tushmanese in Lensen, Siena Korup, Kok Bayrak. Thank you very much. And what's so unique about Bayan is that she is also continuing her Crimean Tatar uh, language um, lessons uh, virtually. Uh, through the classes in Kiev. So she is online learning the Crimean Tatar language uh, through online classes that are given in Kiev. And uh, Leon, we're so proud of you because you represent the future. You represent that you have preserved our language, which uh, our Crimean Tatar language, which is what our flag is about. And we're so proud of you and uh, and uh, we hope to see you again on the next Crimean Tatar Flag Day. And uh, we are always uh, here for you. Thank you, Bayan, so much. And thank you for your mom and dad who raised you so well. Thank you. And the next, um, uh, we have now, we are going into, the performance uh, feature of this Leah, and I am so excited. Um, we have uh, the next singer, uh, Udia Hermanchikle. She is a Crimean Tatar singer. Uh, she is a conservator trained singer, and she's known uh, throughout Crimea. Uh, she has persevered to learn the uh, Crimean Tatar uh, music uh, during exile, as well as upon her return. And her next song is called, titled, Ebediet, which means eternity. And it was written by her husband, in 1981, who is no longer with us. But um, in the um, Crimean Tatar uh, language, there is no such word as husband and wife. It is a, a gender neutral language. And uh, what we say uh, when we refer to the writer of the music as her husband, uh, we refer to it as her lifelong friend. So this is, uh, so her lifelong friend has written this song and, and she will follow up with the second song, uh, Karamfil. Yuri Hanım, Edebiyet şarkıyı başlasanız çok memnun olur. Selamun Aleyküm saygılı vatandaşlarımız. Aleyküm selam. Hepinizle can yürekten 
Харам татар милли байрах кунен хайрлайм. Эпнузге саглых саламет лектрием. Аллах сузге ярдам джоулсон. Сабр ветахат берсон. Я шасын бызым милли храм татар байрахамыз. Я шасын бызым храм татар халхамыз. Эдебиет. Бу ерне. Менам омур архадашам. Мемет Арсланов язда. А почему это стоит? Сулараха, еле руча, Керидон мейке челер, Те кранижи чечекача, Гаефола, Чечеклер, те кранижи, чечекача, Гаефола, чечеклер, Эбедиет, буджан ватан, он гол мистур кус, сендер билем омрам нсур, сен син юреги мнен юр, сендер билем омрам нсур. Сен син юреги мне на яра, Эбедиет те канаватан, Он осевги эбеди, Эбедиет те канаватан, он осевги эбеди, Ватан махарам, милеты махарам, Дюня дао эмели. Ватан махарам, милеты махарам, Wow, that was tremendous. Now, the next song, uh, Uriana, is my favorite song. Actually, I wanted her to sing this song so very much. It's titled uh, Karanfil, which means a carnation. You know, Crimea is famous for its field flowers. I remember my mother, whenever she, we went into a flower shop, she would always uh, state that she remembers the poppy flowers, the lavender fields, and those car carnations, which is also a symbol of love. And so I, I think you don't have to understand the language, but the harmonic uh, sounding of this Altaic or Uraltic Turkic language. It's so beautiful. And I believe this song just matches perfectly. And Urian uh, sings this beautifully. Karanfile başlayabilir misin, Urian? Lütfen. Не хорбах ты сен мана, хорбах ты билиен деволсам, вонар вермез дим сана, хорбах ты. Великенды волсам, Вон альвермея с дима сана, Харанахилю, Ложа 
baksın sararıp solacaksın men babanın sol ile eştim sen menim olacaksın men babanın sol ile eştim sen menim olacaksın karan şiir kurutmadım yar seni unutmadım senin canın yutmadım Üstüne yar tutmadım Senin canın öncütmadım Üstüne yar Мен де бір сөз тейм айтма, бұтын қырым татар халқымызны, бұзым милли қырым татар байрақ күнінен қайрлайық. Әркезге саулық сәлеметлік тілейік. Яшасын бұзым қырым татар байрағымыз, яшасын бұзым милетіміз, яшасын бұзым ватан қырымыз. Tatar people and long live uh, the Crimean Tatar culture. Thank you. Çok sağ olun, var olun, Ülyan'ım, Dinar Hanım, çok teşekkür ederim. Dinar Hanım, çok teşekkür ederim. So next up, um, we have a total change of pace and um, we have a video recording of the song No Man by the Crimean rock band Tatar Gudur. I hope I've said that correctly, but um, the drummer, Suleyman Mamutov is here to tell us a little bit about the group and about the song that we're about to hear. So uh, Suleyman, hi, thank you for joining us from Kyiv. And by the hi. way, uh, Yuri was just in Brooklyn, so now we've jumped from New York to <laughs> Kyiv. Um, thanks so much for joining us. First, can you tell us what, what does Chatar Gudur mean? Thank you so much for inviting me and having me here and for all the Shatur Gudur. So Shatur Gudur can be translated as uh, ruckus or turmoil. Uh, we created Shatur Gudur more than 10 years ago in the dusty outskirts of Akhmizjit, a city in Crimea, which to certain unknown reasons is still officially called Simferopol. My brother Jamil and I love playing different genres and styles of music, but most of all, we liked two things, the sound of uh, overdriven guitars, noisy drums, and our native Crimean Tatar songs and melodies. That's why we decided to combine these elements. Uh, those time, at those time, I had two songs writ written by myself in the Crimean Tatar language and we recorded them in 2007 with our friends. And later we decided to record a song Sarai Arawakwara, which can be translated as Backstreets of Sarai" with a heavy sound. It, it was written, this song was written by a famous poet and journalist, uh, Yunus Kandim, and it was then performed by singer Edi Bakhtisaraiwe. This song uh, tells about the grief of people who miss their city, and that's why it became almost a folk song due to its vast uh, popularity among, among the Crimean star people. Uh, this result was uh, really impressive. And for us, uh, this was a crucial moment, moment when we decided to continue making and recording our songs and covers of folk songs in our native language. And this is how Shatur Gudur was found. Usually I was writing the lyrics and Jamil made the music. I can say that Shatur Gudur sound and style was crystallized from grunge, punk rock, and experimental music. And of course, on top of this, 
you may recognize a mixture of traditional Crimean Tatar melody, uh, which is often flavored with Balkan tunes. Our ly lyrics touch a wide range of issues. Some of them discover philosophical questions reflecting existential issues. Others are dramatic stories telling about the life of our people and related to many problems, problems such as assimilation, discrimination, and injustice. In 2014, after the start uh, of temporary occupation, the whole band moved to Kyiv. And in 2017, we recorded uh, and presented to the public our first album, uh, Burundan Chukhtoy, which can be translated as came out from, from nose. Uh, <laughs> and today, today, today Shatur Gudur consists of uh, Bikir Haibulayev, Jamil, Mamutov, and Fikret Idesov, and me uh, and the drums. Um, you know, um, uh, Suleiman, uh, uh, His Excellency Volodymyr Yelchenko has a rock and roll heart, and he listens to rock music. And so when I heard about your man, uh, your band, Shatur Kutur, you know, uh, I follow His Excellency on uh, different social media, and he's always going to rock bands. And I thought this was such a wonderful time. And I, I think we cannot wait to hear uh, the music. I heard it before, you're, you're and it is hard yeah. rock. <laughs> I avail myself of this opportunity to present my compliments. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, uh, you may uh, play the video. And yes, uh, as you like, as you like, please. Just two, two words yeah, about this song, if I may. Of course, please. Of course. Uh, yeah, that's the last for me. Uh, the music for this song, No Man, uh, was made by Jamil, my brother. And instead, instead of creating and adapting our lyrics, uh, we just used several lines from the anthem of Crimean Tatar people. Antet Kenmin, which means I pledged. Uh, we put four lines of three lines from, uh, from this anthem, one of them telling how come two brothers do not see each other. So it was written, as you all know, by Naman Chilebich Khan, a famous Crimean Tatar politician, lawyer, and Mufti of Crimean Muslims. And uh, he was also the first president of the short-lived independent Crimean People's Republic, which was established in November 2017. Thank you. <laughs> no. Sunegi Kardash, Barbara, the God Besser, on the Archon of Gutsia, Kai Kurma, Sabia Shasa. Nasenal Sunegi Kardash, Barbara, the God Besser, on the Archon of Gutsia, Kai Kurma, Sabia Shasa.
Yerciler gelir Mena kap Mege gene bir gün Mezerciler gelir Mena kap Mege gene bir gün Mezerciler gelir Mege gene bir kum Mezarcılar gelir Mene kum Mege Na 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 Wow, that was really great, wasn't it, Leo? From uh, Suleiman, uh, were you a rock uh, band player first, then attorney, or you? became an attorney and then became a rock band player. What came first? That was fabulous. Yeah, just It was at the same time, I think. <laughs> Law and music. Oh, that's a diplomatic <laughs> answer. <laughs> that was, that was very nice. The Tatar flag day again. Yes. And, and it shows that uh, the Crimean Tatars are not monolithic that there are so many layers and and such talent and and uh just find uh, this talent this creativity is finding its way uh, in different modes of expression i love that it's so individualistic and and uh we just i just absolutely loved it you know i i'm a, as I, when I was growing up, I was a little hippie and a rock and roll person myself. So <laughs> I can relate, even though we're generations apart, I can relate. <laughs> so that was a great sound from, uh, from Kiev. You're right, Leah. It's, uh, it shows the wide gamut of the Crimean Tatar. It, it's really, I'm so proud of everyone. Of course, of course. And I think next we are traveling to Romania, Constanza, Romania. And we have Melia Yusuf and Sarah Yusuf, who are next in line. And they have uh, this beautiful song, Men Annemin Bir Kızı Edim. I was once my mother's daughter. And I see uh, Sarah, you are absolutely uh, sweet and just absolutely gorgeous. I'm so happy to see you because I knew you when you were three years old. So, and um, this is such a wonderful um, uh, picture. It shows how from one generation, from mother to daughter, this propagation of our culture, of our tradition, and of our songs. And, um, you know, the absence of the uh, uh, Crimean Tatar uh, institutions, the family becomes the key center point. So, um, uh, Meliha, Zara? Buna Sara. Uh, yes. Santa. Hello, good Hello. evening from Constanta. Hello. Also, it's a Romanian flag day. For me, it's a double uh, holiday. <laughs> because today it's Romanian flag day and also Crimean Tatars flag day. Epimuske Kaila Bolson, Erkezen by Iraq, no Kaila Bolson. This was Limus. Zimbra say John Lu. Older, older problem. <laughs> 
was beautiful. Thank you. Uh, you know, the Crimean Tatar history is quite complex. The hundreds of years of uh, imperialism uh, uh, by uh, Soviet Russia and imperialist Russia has uh, really um, uh, left, uh, plus the Crimean War, has uh, initiated uh, this emigration from out of Crimea and Romania was one of the places. It was uh, the primary destination for most refugees, Crimean Tatar refugees during the uh, Ottoman history. So um, this layer, uh, the, the fact that we are coming together all from different parts of the world, Mia, also, is a testament of, of the tremendous uh, repression and colonization that the Crimean Tatars have suffered. But, but, but that we have maintained our Crimean Tatar language and culture. And it was such a, a, a wonderful uh, for uh, Meliha uh, that you are here with us, Sarah. And you are absolutely, the picture is so beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, I think the now we have heard Leah so many singers, and now we want to see a dancer. And so, but we have this on video because we wanted to make sure that the sound and the performance was right. And the dancer uh, is Aisha Kubadinov, and uh, she is dancing on the. Um, East River, <laughs> uh, right, uh, and uh, with Crimean Tatar music, and it's uh, uh, wonderful. And the dance that she's going to um, uh, perform is titled Emir Jalal Haitarma, and it is a uh, beautiful dance, and it's a solo female dance, and it starts with a very slow uh, motion. And uh, gradually it increases to uh, a more faster paced, uh, what's called haitarum. And you will see her uh, whirling around like a dervish uh, towards the end performance of her dance. So um, this is New York for you. In New York City, you have these multiple cultures and in the middle of New York, we have the Crimean Tatar Imeljila Aitarma dance. So um, uh, whenever you're ready, and it's performed by Aisha Kubedin, Aisha Kubedin, whose family comes from Sevastopol, Crimea. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yes, I see that she had an audience. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, she tried to go out at the uh, quiet time, but um, I turn it over to you, Leah. Yeah, so we have some time now um, to field questions, um, take questions for our various participants. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you can type them in the YouTube chat. Um, I actually have a few questions already. So um, the first one is for Yurie. Um, you're based in New York, right? You're based in Brooklyn. Woo, Brooklyn. Um, do you perform often in the city? For those of us who are in the area, can we come and come and hear you perform? Um, and if so, where, where can we find more information? Can you hear me? Did you want to ask Dinara? Yeah. Did, did, could you hear me? Yeah. Uh, uh, can you, uh, Leah, repeat your question? Uh, Uriana would like to uh, answer. Sure, absolutely. So um, you're you're based in in New York. Um, do you perform often in New York? Is there for for those of us who are local? Can we come and come and see you perform in person when we're all out of quarantine? Uriyanım, ses soruyor. Sizleri nerede duyabiliriz? Brooklyn'da performance yapıyor musunuz? Siz eğer sizin şarkıyı duymak istesem nereye gidebilirim? Seni nasıl tekrar görebilirim diye soruyor. Ben Kırım Tatar Cemiyeti'nde iştirak ettim. Çok yer yer yerladım. Festivaller, de Manhattan'de olduk. Pilsilvalya'da olduk. Çok yerlerde iştirak ettik. Yerlerimizin, oyunlarımızı gösterdik. Biz de Çet memlekette yaşasak da o ufadıklarımızı unutmadık. Dilimizle, medeniyetimizle, yerlerimizle, her şey ne bizim taraftan gerek olsa da biz o bütün Bular, buları adamlara, ballara gösterdik, öğrettik. Yes, she uh, mentioned, Leah, that, you know, she performs regularly at the Crimean Tatar uh, Association in Brooklyn, out in New Utrecht Avenue, and that whenever there are uh, festivals, there are uh, Ukrainian festivals in Pennsylvania, throughout the U.S. Uh, they have performed and Dinara, her daughter, is a spectacular dancer. And uh, whenever there are uh, festivals throughout, Ukrainian festivals or any kind of Crimean Tatar event in Brooklyn, there is uh, the annual Crimean Tatar night, evenings, uh, gala, if you will. And uh, so uh, she performs all the time because she feels, she says that she feels obligated to um, really um, convey and share the Crimean Tatar uh, culture with all the audiences. Great, that's wonderful. Well, Razan culture will stay on top of uh, Uriye's performance schedule <laughs> and we will let you know when, when you can see her again. <laughs> Um, um, so the next question is for uh, Meliha and Zara. Um, what is what kind of training do both either of you have, and and how do you keep the tradition? You know, what sort of inspires you to keep the tradition alive? How do you keep it alive in your day to day um, life? Uh, we are here in Romania, where uh, we live for. Uh where I born, but Sarah born in New York. And we are going to school. I'm uh, doing my master's degree. And we keep, uh, we are busy, uh, uh, actually. And um, the one, um, so, sometimes we are going to sing for uh, 
Sarah, it's for first time singing now. She's, she, she never sing before because she has a beautiful voice, but she likes more to dance, traditional dance. She, she no wants to dance, uh, to, to sing because she say it's enough one soloist in the house. <laughs> she doesn't want to compete with mom. <laughs> she has a beautiful voice. And is there, are you, Romania has a, has a large Crimean Tatar diaspora, so are there, there are ensembles? Yes, yes, for now we don't have it, it's because some reason, for, for some reason, but before then this we have a beautiful uh, community here, we have community here, working here, strong, and uh, uh, we have, uh, Romania, it's a, a beautiful country for us, uh, welcoming uh, people who uh, actually in Romania everybody has the same life, no problems, no problems. We are 18 minority here in Romania, which uh, we live in peace. The Broja is a place where everybody live in peace. So that's why we love Romania and we like the Broja. And when I will, we used to live in New York. It was not uh, heavy for me because we are here uh, in Romania. In Rebroja, we have many, many communities who live in peace. So this is important for to say. Wonderful. Um, Suleiman, you mentioned that the band moved to Kiev in 2014, um, as many Tatars did. Um, what has the reception been like of the band by a kind of Kiev Ukrainian audience? Um, can you talk a little bit about, about that? Uh, thank you for the question. Unexpectedly, the reception uh, was very kind. And we, 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 we even, I can say we didn't expect that we will find so many, so many listeners of our music uh, in Kiev and in Ukraine. The, as a whole, so we performed two uh, two gigs, I think, in Kiev, uh, and also we performed at the Ukrainian old Ukrainian festival festival uh, Flyuhery Lvova, uh, and also then we in 2015, I think, we were invited to perform. Uh, if if we talk about not only Ukraine but in the neighboring uh, and the whole region. Uh, we were also invited to perform in Poland uh, one time. So, uh, yeah, we don't know, but <laughs> I, I don't know what was the reason. Maybe uh, the only question that we have uh, while performing here in Kiev is um, it would be better if we know uh, the whole s the, the lyrics and uh, understand what you're um, what you're saying about. But uh, for this, I'm trying always uh, to provide a short explanation or short story a summary of each song before we start playing. <laughs> yeah, well, music can speak for itself. Um, are you guys doing any collaborations with Ukrainian bands or, or would you like to do a collaboration with any particular Ukrainian bands? Oh. Well, I can say that, again, we didn't plan this, but last year we performed at the, uh, the festival organized by uh, Crimean House in Kyiv, uh, and it was dedicated to the Independence Day of Ukraine. So we played and collaborated together with the band Bouvier, which uh, is led by the former leader of the Tartak uh, band, a uh, very famous band in Ukraine. Uh, outside of this, um, I can say that yeah, maybe it, it was more, you know, underground and was was, was not uh, was, was not known to a wide public. Okay, maybe New York next. <laughs> like, we would like to. We would like to, of course. Uh, I've been to New York, but with other reasons and are the purposes. I I often know this well when uh, I represented the Majlis of Crimean Tatar people at the UN Permanent Forum, but the other, uh, other reason would be also welcome for us. <laughs> That's great. That's great. 
Isla, would you do you have any further questions? Do you like to f say a few few additional words? We do have one more one more video to share. Uh, oh yes. Uh, no, um, actually, you know, this has really turned out absolutely fabulous. And uh, it also, you know, I was so happy to get all the performers because um, there's so much talent out there and that's looking for a platform and looking for uh, uh, different uh, times of the year in which they can perform. As you can see, we have the Crimean Tatar youth who absolutely speak beautiful Crimean Tatar and they're ready to get on stage. And then we have mothers and grandmothers and uh, Crimean Tatars who are ready to pass on the next uh, uh, to the next generation of our culture. And that uh, Crimean Tatar Flag Day is more than a flag. It's really our culture, expression of our tradi uh, tradition, and also that we have survived. And, uh, you know, uh, if I can add the old American baseball adage, you know, Russia does not seem to understand no. Uh, in 1783, they uh, colonized uh, uh, Crimea, and then uh, in the Soviet, uh, we came back again, we survived, and in the Soviet Union, it was endless deportation by Soviet Stalin, not one Crimean Tatar left behind, and after Ukraine's independence in 1991, we returned 300,000 and now 2014, they're back again, this attempted re-annexation. That's why the actually the operative word here is attempt, attempted, because they failed three times. And we know that we're going to get Crimea back because at three strikes, you are out, permanently out. So, um, <laughs> so in that uh, sense, but... Uh, and I think that it's very important that uh, truly Crimea has only Ukraine and the tremendous support uh, and the strength and the unity. Uh, I, uh, I, have, I can speak to, the tes to this testimony as well as other Crimean Tatars that uh, the Ukrainians and Crimean Tatar togetherness and collaboration uh, makes us strong, and it's not what the occupiers like. And uh, so I, I see tremendous strength in our unity and inspiration and creativity and something new and something uh, blue and yellow comes out in different shapes and forms. And I would like to present uh, the video, share with the video on Guzal Kurum. And that is the traditional way of where we uh, uh, always um, uh, end our uh, events uh, with Gizagkarum. And it means beautiful Crimea. We love our flag. We love Crimea. We love our flowers. We love our Tiberic, our food. And, uh, and I think once uh, we are free in Crimea, you are going to see Crimean Tatar creativity and talent and success that has never been seen before. And we are getting glimpse of it uh, in Kiev of the tremendous talent out there. We are getting glimpse, but we are at the same time sad because it's occupied. We want to go freely. We, we love freedom. So, and I think this video speaks to our unity and uh, our love for each other. Yeah, on that note, um, you know, we deeply thank our wonderful performers for joining us from around the world today, the diplomats who have spoken on the importance of this, of this event and of this culture. And this video that we're about to show is a beautiful recording of a Crimean folk song, but it's sung in Ukrainian. And so it really speaks to the solidarity of Ukrainian and Tatar people working together towards the deoccupation of Crimea and re reuniting Crimea with Ukraine. Kremse Ukraina. Yes, Crimea is Ukraine. Next year in Barchesaray. Народна пісня кримських татар. 
Yes, next year in Barchester. I thank you, everyone. Thank you, Your Excellency, for staying on. Thank you. Thank you for everyone. Ďakujem. Nastupného roku v Barčesaraji. Ďakujem. Ďakujem. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.